This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This lecture is on Chapter 14 of the free lecture notes of Paper F9, uh, and it's the last chapter chatting about sources of finance. And this one is Islamic finance. Um, and it's got more and more important, and that's why it uh, was brought into the uh, syllabus for the exam a few years ago, because uh, financial institutions make the money, or traditionally have made the money, by lending the money to businesses and charging interest. Um, under Islamic laws, you're not allowed to make money out of money by charging interest, something called, uh, the word is riba that you're not allowed to charge interest on money. And of course, London in particular, being a big financial centre, they've been looking for ways of being able to effectively lend money to um, uh, Islamic organisations in a way they can get money without actually charging interest. Um, there are various other um, Islamic laws, you know, you can't invest in um, things like tobacco, drugs, alcohol, etc. So it's fairly tight, but the main thing is this business of not being allowed to charge interest. And that although financial institutions can provide money to businesses, and they can share in the profits, but they must also share in the risk, share in the losses. And although you can't be asked any calculations in this exam, you are expected to be aware of the different Islamic financial interests, which are listed in section three. And so I'll keep this lecture short, there's no point in me just reading it to you word for word, but let me quickly go through each one. And although there won't be a lot of marks in the exam on Islamic finance, um, there'd certainly like to be some marks and I'm afraid you are expected, or you can, you can be tested on the actual words. Uh, you'll have to forgive my pronunciation. I'm probably talking complete rubbish, but murabaha, ijara, mudaraba, and so on. So it's just pure learning. And as I say again, no arithmetic. Um, so let's just run down them. Um, murabaha. As I've written, this is effectively a credit sale um, that you know very well. Uh, traditionally, you might sell goods on credit, and if they're late paying, you charge them interest. Well, again, in the Islamic law, that's not allowed. Uh, and the way around it is, uh, by all means, agree that they can take extra credit. But instead of adding on interest, you simply charge a higher price. You know, you might normally sell for a hundred dollars. All right, they want two months credit. Fine, perhaps you'll charge for hundred and five dollars or something. Uh, it's just a higher price as opposed to purely an interest charge. Uh, more relevant in terms of long-term finance. Ijara, as it says again, effectively a lease. Uh, where instead of lending a business money to buy an asset and charging them interest on it, um, we buy the asset and effectively rent it to the, uh, the business. So they pay rent rather than interest. And as you can see at the end of uh, the lease period, depending on the agreement, either we take back the asset or we sell it to the uh, company. However, look at the last line. If we're providing the asset and charging rent, uh, we remain the owner and we're responsible for maintenance insurance, so we are taking on some risk. Uh, the third one, Mudaraba. Again, I must have Apologise for my pronunciation. I should, I should look up and learn how to pronounce it properly, but still. Um, I've got the bold things. It's similar to equity finance. 
I, as the investor, I provide finance for the business. And I arrange for somebody else to actually run the business. A bit like me uh, putting in share capital and employing a director. However, profits are shared between both parties. So although I won't charge interest uh, on the money I'm investing, hopefully we make profits and I get a share of it. But all losses are suffered by me, the investor. So just like uh, shares, if I put shares in a company, uh, by shares, I'm entitled to the profits, but equally I suffer the losses, but the profits have to be shared and there I suffer all the losses. Uh, next one, Musharaka. Uh, here, both parties provide capital. It's like a partnership. So, um, I'm investing money, but so is somebody else. We share profits between us, but we also share the losses. Um, it regards a bit like venture capital as I've written. But again, I share the profits, but under this arrangement, we share the losses, but I'm still taking a risk. Unlike just pure lending, you know, where I just get the um, interest, but I'm not at risk of losing anything unless the business collapses. Here, you share the profits, but you must share the losses as well. Uh, and finally, Sukkuk. Those are, uh, as written, it's equivalent to debt finance. Uh, <coughs> here, instead of just putting in money and getting interest, uh, what happens is the people who arrange this buy an asset. For an example, they may buy a property. Uh, and to finance buying it, I ask you all to buy certificates in it, just like raising debt finance. But instead of getting paid interest on the money you've put in, this asset, maybe we've bought a property and we rent it out. The income from the asset is then distributed to the investors. Uh, so, um, the rent, the rent coming in is what you get a share of. It's equivalent to the interest. But of course, if the rent gets higher or lower, there is that element of risk. And the person who arranges all this can, as you can see there, charge a fee. Um, but it's a way of, instead of buying debentures and getting the fixed interest, you buy these units and you get a share of whatever the money's been invested in. So there we are. I mean, read it yourself. Learn basically what each of those different um, instruments are. Um, but again, it won't be many marks in the exam, but it almost certainly will be asked somewhere.